desires that the Lord will move your way tonight. Just say, move in me, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. I give honor and glory to God who is my life. Our chief apostle, presiding bishop, the Bishop Charles Edward Blake, we honor you tonight. First assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Brooks. Second presiding bishop, Bishop Macklin. The secretary of the board to our bishop and all of the general board. To Bishop John Henry Sheard and the Board of Bishops, Bishop Joel Lyle is our General Secretary, Bishop Lemuel Thuston, the Chairman of our General Assembly, Superintendent Michael Eady and the pastors and elders, and to all of the men in their respective places, but our visionary, nurturing and caring General Supervisor, who's given me an opportunity to be a part of this dynamic Department of Women of the Church of God in Christ, our beloved General Supervisor, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve. And for our General Supervisor Emerita, Mother Willie Mae Rivers in her absence, to my administrative facilitator sisters, my executive board president, Mother Mary K. Sims, and my co-sisters, to all of my supervisor sisters, and especially to the class of 2019 of the Jurisdictional Supervisors Training Academy. The fragrance of this great church, Lady May L. Blake, we honor you. Mother Doris Brooks, we honor you, Lady Vanessa Macklin, and certainly for Lady Louise Patterson. Lady B.J. McKinney, we honor you as the great lead of this convention, and to all of the general board members' wives. I'm grateful tonight for my jurisdiction, the historical Louisiana first jurisdiction, Bishop and Lady Proctor, and all of you who are here with me tonight. Thankful for my churches who are gathered together and watching me at the church. Hopefully you're praying and not just watching. I love your first church in Gethsemane. And I'm grateful to have my husband here tonight with me. We've just celebrated two weeks ago, 40 years together on this journey. The Bishop Alton E. Gatlin. Thankful for my two sons, and yes, you are absolutely correct, Mother. The best part, my grands, who are watching me tonight from home. But I'm grateful to have my daughter in love share with me tonight in ministry, Kalisha. Yes, I'm saddened not to have my parents here who bleed Kojic, breathe Kojic, live Kojic, but they're watching live to my mother and father. General Board Member Emeritus, the Bishop Roy Lawrence Haley Winbush, and Mother Maya Carter Winbush. I love you and I thank you for all of the preparation that you did to prepare me for life. And to my praise challenge over for family, thank you for being here with me and praying for me. I don't want to take up precious time talking about new books and products and online training, but tonight I have a special gift for everyone here and those of you who are streaming live with us tonight. Just go to vwgonline.com and receive your free digital gift. Can I get to the word? Would you stand with me as I read the word? If I forgot anybody, just know I do love you. First Samuel chapter four. And for the sake of time, I only want to read two verses. 21 says, and she named the child 
Ichabod. Saying the glory is departed from Israel. Because the ark of God was taken. And because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel. For the ark of God is taken. And this is the word of our God. We thank you tonight for an opportunity to steal ourselves in your presence. We thank you for an opportunity to hear you speak. I have no words but thine. And I thank you tonight that my flesh is killed. No flesh can glory in your sight. So speak for yourself. Have your way in this place. We thank you for the fresh oil and the fresh fire. In this place, rain supreme. Let your glory be in this place in an unusual way. So we say yes and we surrender. We offer no resistance to the manifestation tonight. We thank you for miracles, signs and wonders following the word, for healings and deliverances, the infilling and the refilling of the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, I'll only say what you say, say, and I'll only do what you say, do, that you might be glorified and that the people of God might be edified. And together, God, we give you glory and honor and praise in advance for what you shall do in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you take your seat, the one thing that blesses God, the one thing that gives glory to God, is not when we praise him after the fact. Anybody can give God glory for what he's done after he's done it. But what prompts God, what activates God, what causes God to rise up and to move on our behalf is when we clap our hands and we open our mouths and we give our God the fruit of our lips in its path for what you believe God will do tonight. For the miracle is a who needs a miracle tonight? If you need a miracle, then open your mouth and give God some praise for your miracle. He is the God of miracles. Wait, 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 musicians. Oh, we got a problem here in Baltimore. See, that cute stuff not gonna work tonight. It's just not gonna work tonight. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, go on and drop it. Listen, tonight is the kind of night if you need to take your hat off, if it's tight on your head, take your hat off. If your shoes are too tight, take your shoes off. But what I need you to do is stop playing hard to get with God. If you need a miracle, your back is up against the wall. You know what your left home facing and can't nobody help you but God. Open your mouth. tonight 
that I want to teach. Can you say the glory of God? Present or absent? To be present is to be existing. To be in your set place at your designated time. To be absent is not to be in your place. To be somewhere doing something else that you feel is of more importance. To be lacking and non-existent. The glory of God represents the undeniable electrifying presence of the Lord our God. It is his splendor and majestic beauty which embraces every essence of holiness. His aura, the sheer magnificence of his presence. Can I take you back to Moses? The glory cloud of the Lord was initially seen here in Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 and 22. When the Lord went before them by day in a pillow of a cloud, and he was there in a pillow of fire by night. Moses saw him in Exodus 3, 2 through 5, in the flame of the burning bush. A bush that burned but yet was not consumed and then when he saw the glory of God he was alerted take off your shoes for the ground where you stand is holy ground sometimes I think we forget that we are on holy ground Moses is given a glimpse of the glory in Exodus chapter 13 verses 18 through 23 where he kept begging God can I please see your glory when was the last time you put aside your gimme list gimme this gimme that and said God all I want is your glory do I have any hungry people in here who are hungry for the glory of God? Who are tired of going to church as usual? Tired of the same order of service? You're tired of the same people saying the same things they've said for 20 years and nothing changes, nothing happens. You go one way and you leave the second. So Moses said, I want to see you. He said, you can't see my face, but I, I, I'll put you behind this rock and let you see my hind part. And the thing about it is when Moses came down, and he came down because while he was there, the people were in trouble. Sometimes we don't know how to behave when the leader is absent. We take an advantage of doing it our way. Setting aside principles and standards of holiness. And so when he finds himself down, the people say, Okay, look at you, Moses. Where have you been? You are shining, you are blinding us. Can I tell you that when you've been in the glory of God, you don't have to spend 20 minutes at the microphone trying to convince us that you have been in the glory of God. When you have been in his presence, it is undeniable. You don't have to tell me, I will see it and it shall be filled. So tonight, we need the kabod, the heavyweight. We need the weight of God. We need the manifestation of his glory. I know you're consumed by what you're going through, but 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See, 
see what you've been through is really nothing compared to the glory that you're going to. That's a good place for you to give God some praise. Give God some praise. And then the Shekinah glory of the God that we serve is the English translation of a Hebrew word meaning dwelling or settling. It denotes the dwelling or settling of the divine presence of God. The supernatural light or cloud of God. So tonight I suggest to you, we need the glory of God to throw away everything not like us and throw his weight around. You sure? Somebody help me tell him, throw your weight around. Oh, come on, tell him like you mean it, throw your weight around. You know what happens when people throw their weight around. They act like you ain't nobody. They act like you don't matter. They act like you don't count because they have authority and they walk in like they have authority. I want the glory of God to walk in tonight like he is the great authority. I want the glory of God to come in tonight and settle and dwell and sit with us. So tonight for a few fleeting moments, I want to take you on a journey that will demand your undivided attention. Your willingness to take a candid look at yourself and then make a concrete decision to make the necessary changes for the glory of God to be present and not absent. These few moments are meant to encourage us to stop being satisfied. We're just coming together and assembling ourselves without the glory of God being present. Several things prohibit the glory of God from being present. Number one, we have our own agenda. And that agenda does not include the glory. Number two, we're too busy seeking positions and titles and being political. Yes, even in the church that there's no room for the glory. Number three, we are full of pride and lifted up in who we believe that we are and not that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We're thinking we are grazing in our own pasture. Arrogance has consumed us. But the word of God says in Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Number four, we are condoning the sinful actions of others, especially in the temple. First Timothy 5 and 22 says, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins, keep thyself pure. And number five, it's going to be all right, keep your seatbelts on. We have a strange sound. There's a strange sound among us because we're in the same place, but we're not all with one accord. We've not learned the art of working together in unity. I want to be who you are. I want what you have. I'm not willing to pay my dues. I'm not willing to wait on my turn. So I want a character to assess you slander your name I want to displace you so I can have your place Psalms 133 and 1 says behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren and sisters to dwell together in unity Ephesians 4 and 3 says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The glory only shows up in a peaceful atmosphere. The glory only shows up when we're unified in unity. Let me share with you a biblical example of the glory of God being absent found here in the word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 4. Israel lost the battle against the Philistines and 4,000 men were killed. Sin caused them to lose the battle. Sin gives 
gives the enemy the advantage over us. Never have to wonder. Don't have to be judgmental. But when you allow sin to come in, it will strip you of the Holy Ghost. He only deals and lives and has habitation in a clean temple. I know you're shaking and quaking and saying some kind of word and running up and down the aisle, but it's nothing but bodily exercise because sin has stripped you of the glory of God. Then they decided perhaps we should go get the Ark of the Covenant. We go get the Ark, we're sure to win over the Philistines. And the Bible said they went to Shiloh because what they were doing was not working. The glory of God was clearly absent. Having an attack from your enemies will clearly give you a wake up call. It will remind you that without God, you can do nothing. Without him, you will be an utter failure. You'll be just like a ship without a sail. So from Shiloh, the ark is brought up from the priest Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Must I alert you, they were ungodly serving in the temple. These guys were terrible, guilty of doing sexual things in the temple with women who came to give God glory. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. It is ungodly for men to pursue women in the temple. And it is also ungodly for women to pursue men in the temple. Can I get some help? Woo! It's ungodly, help me Holy Ghost, for men to pursue boys in the temple. It's ungodly for women to pursue girls in the temple. It is downright nasty. It's an abomination to the Lord. who it's in. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hey, God. But yet, because they were the priest's sons, mother, they were given special privilege. They looked over their sin allow them to bring in the precious Ark of Covenant of God. So when the Ark arrives at the camp, they're, all, they're, they're so excited, Bishop Blake, you could hear the noise. They just knew, oh, we got it now. Woo, the Ark is back. We got it, we got it, we got it. But the Philistines heard the noise. Can I tell you, your, your enemy is listening to your noise. One thing about it is the enemy cannot always detect everything about your noise, but he hears your noise. The one thing the Philistines said was, oh my God, they have brought that thing back. That means that the God who brought the plagues on the Egyptians is here to fight for his people. The one thing that the devil knows is that our God will fight for us. The devil understands we have no need to fight. I keep telling people, lie on me. Do whatever you want to do to me. I don't have to lift my hand. You don't have to lift your hand. Don't put your mouth on anybody. Just do what God is telling you to do. God's got it. He's got it. If God be for you, who can be against you? Know who you are in God. So, so, Philistines say we were, we were lost. 
It is amazing that you can shout over your sin. It's amazing you gotta dance in your fornication. You gotta ha na 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 in your adultery. You gotta do 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 with your lying spirit. You gotta be ka 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 ka. Oh my 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 with your gambling habits. Oh my my you got the audacity. You don't obey those who have the rule over you. You're full of lasciviousness. You're full of idolatry. You're full of rep. I lost my audience. You you bitch and wound would you help me? You're full of rebelliousness. And the sin of rebelliousness is as the sin of witchcraft. Tired of being beat up at home. Tired of having 
low self-esteem because he called them names. Say you ain't nobody. You not cute. You don't have what it takes. So because she was tired, she said, can I just hurry up and push this seed out of me? And the Bible says, they were trying to tell her, you got a boy. Quickly, she says, call him Ichabod. That's why you got to be careful what you name your children. She can't even spell it and she's in the eighth grade. It's not about just a name, but the name has a meaning. What does that name mean? It means that the glory of the Lord had departed. Oh my God. So, I know you're about to get offended, but you'll get over it. I'm going to obey God. Everybody lift your hands. This whole house is under arrest. It's time for repentance. I, I need to get to the next part, but he told me to stop and let this house repent. Because as we repent, the glory can come in. Shake on. Hold on my shot eye. And everybody just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I'm, sorry I'm sorry for the things I've done, the, the things I've said, things I participated in, things I should have done and I didn't do. Forgive me and give me another chance. I'll live for you and I'll do your will. Thank you now for another chance. In Jesus' name, now give God some praise because he gave us another chance. See, if he had not given us another chance, some of us would have gone to hell and we died tonight. But we thank you. Can I give you an example now of when the glory is present? Second Corinthians Chronicles, rather, chapter 5. Seven months later, the ark is returned to the children of Israel. Solomon completes the work of the temple, brings in all of the artifacts, silver and gold and everything that his father David had dedicated. He assembles everyone as they bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion and all of the holy vessels. The elders came ooh, 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 ooh. and the Levites brought it up. Take special note that King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel in that sixth verse says that they were assembled unto him before the ark and they sacrificed, everybody say sacrifice, sheep and oxen which could not be told nor numbered for the multitude. When the glory of God is present, nobody has to beg us to give. Nobody has to promise us gimmicks. Nobody has to promise us tricks. The Bible here says they gave so much. He said, don't bring anything else. We don't have room. When was the last time at your church they brought so much and the money was so high that you said, don't bring any more. We have more than enough. They placed the ark in the Holy of Holies, the most holy place under the wings of the cherubims. And that ark contained the two tables which Moses put therein at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel as they came out of Egypt. And the Bible says, And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, and this is verse 11, that all the priests that were present were sanctified. Okay, that's that. I lost you. Y'all missed it. See, when the glory of God is absent, the priest can do whatever they want to do and still serve communion. It says here that all of the priests, the Levitical priesthood were, everybody shout, sanctified. sanctified. I know, I know, 
I know it's 2019 and you, you want to be Pentecostal and you don't want to be called sanctified. It just means that you're set apart for the master's use. I wish somebody who was not ashamed to say, I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. And then, 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 then the Bible says, also the Levites, which were the singers, those of Asaph, Heman, and Jethun, could I have the singers to rise to your feet? And the Bible says, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, good God Almighty, having symbols. and psalteries and harps. They stood at the east end of the altar and with them, 120 of those sanctified priests had their trumpets and they were sounding. You could hear the trumpets and the trumpets were playing. The trumpets were signifying something's about to go the trumpets were signifying let's get on one accord and the Bible says it came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one everybody say one there's a different sound here comes one sound nobody was trying to out sing anybody else but everybody sound and they began to sing with the trumpets, the cymbals, all of the musical instruments and they sang a simple song for he is good for his mercy endureth forever for he is good and his mercy endureth forever for he is good Mercy endureth forever. forever. Can you help the choir? For he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Why were they saying? For he is good. You sitting up in church. And when somebody tells you to give God praise. Peace. 
Church of God in Christ. It's not about how many members we have. But do we have the glory of God present? It's not about who's here and who's not. But the most important thing is, is the glory of God present. Sometimes we're so sophisticated, oh my God, that we rule our shit. Oh, shut up, don't let me see, you must see. We rule out the spirit of the living God. So he said he had us to go through repentance. So we were already there. I know this not for everybody, but I'm telling you tonight, nobody walk, because we're going to reverence the presence of God in this place tonight. Nobody move. But there's some of you that says, I, I want the glory. And I may be standing between people who don't really act like they want it. Then just run down here. I, I want the real glory of the Lord to rest on me. I, I, I don't want you to worry about anybody else. This is a perkerosha. Listen, let, let me help you while they're getting into place. That when the glory comes, hey, hey, healing already takes place deliverance takes place and any miracle you need and for some of you that's trying to act like well I got this time okay I hear you Holy Ghost all titles have just been stripped for the moment no titles I don't mean any disrespect but there are no titles right now oh shit I know, I know y'all don't believe it but when we get to heaven there are no titles ah. Somebody else wants the real glory, Shah. Yeah, hold on, on. I'm tired of just going to church and going back home. But I don't feel the glory. He showed all my high kitty I saw. That's it, thank you, my brother. There's some more men and some more women that are hungry. You got a hunger. You got a thirst in your belly for the glory of God. I'm tired of business as usual. I'm tired of going through the motions and I want the glory of God, the cloud to rest over my life. That's it, come from wherever you are. Have no embarrassment, have no embarrassment, have no embarrassment, that's it, that's it. I see you coming. Come on, there's those on this side. Come on, come on, I need the glory. I need the glory. I need the glory. It'll spill off on your children. Come on, come on, it'll spill off on your other family members. It'll spill off on those at your local church. Supervisors, it'll spill off on the people in your jurisdiction. That's it, keep on coming. I need the glory. I need the glory. I need the glory. That's it, that's it, just keep on coming.
now. You're the place nobody moving, nobody moving. It's dangerous to move right now. It's dangerous, it's really dangerous. Because we reverence the presence of God. Listen, in that sixth verse, it says they brought so much, they couldn't number it. I just want you to get $21 in your hands. Seven is God's number of perfection. In seven months they got the art back. Seven times three is 21. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Just get that $21. Those who are still in the spirit, let them stay there. Don't take them out. Glory to God. Mother says, as long as the lights are on, stay with them. Stay with them. Get that 21. I don't want you to miss this. From your hands and be blessed with our praise as we glory in your glory and praise. When you have that 21, everybody stand to your feet right quick. This is important because your neighbors got to help you. Everybody's standing. Everybody, I don't want you to miss what God is doing. Everybody's standing with that 21. I don't have 21, then I want you to get the best that you have. But I don't want anybody to miss what God is doing. I don't want anybody to miss what God is doing. Put that gift in your right hand. When you shake somebody's hand, you shake their hand with your right hand to extend a blessing to them. So tonight we extend a blessing to our God. And as we extend the blessing to our God, he will extend the blessing back to us. God, no amount of money can pay for your glory. No amount of money can pay for the miracles that we've received. If you're sick, lift your left hand up as well. He's healing right now. Oh my. The healing virtue is flowing right now. Every condition is subject to the blood of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Ah, God, we thank you. So we bless you and we thank you, God, for what you shall do in Jesus' name. Everybody here, pass your gifts down to your left on this side. Pass your gifts down to your left. Here, pass them down to your right. Here, pass them down to your left, to the inner, to the inner aisles. And those of you here, pass them to your left on the, the wing and here. And when you pass it down, tell your neighbors for the glory of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody on that road be hollering for the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. By the time he gets to the end, you ought to give a shout for the glory of God. And what he's doing on your road. Come on, come on, come on. Shout for what he's doing on your road. Give him praise for what he's doing on your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Glory of God is present. Yeah, my, 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 my. 
Now put your hands together and give God some praise for the glory of God. And may he continue to work in your life. Come on, let's give God praise for the word that went forth on this evening. We are standing, my brothers and sisters. We're about to leave this holy place. We are standing, everybody, all over the building. Thank you, Father. Our kind Father, again, we thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on this evening. We thank you for the, what our ears have heard, or what our eyes have seen, and what our hearts have felt. We thank you, God, because you have been glorified. Our souls have been edified, and the devil has been horrified. We pray now, kind Father, as we leave this place, you will give us traveling mercy as we go to our seven destinations. We pray, God, that you will bring us back at the appointed time on tomorrow to receive more of you. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule abide with his people hence now and forevermore. All of God's people say amen and amen. God bless you.